with me? Lord, we thank you for the privilege you give us in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you've called us into a relationship. That as you've invited us to follow you as Lord, Savior, as Rabbi, that, uh, Father, you want to hear from us. You want intimacy and relationship with you. So, Lord, I uh, lift up this time in your word as we look at prayer. Father, lift up the things of this congregation right now. I lift up, Lord, um, each and every person and family that you would bring us into a deeper and more passionate prayer life. That you would help us see how we actually call down the kingdom of God in our prayers. That you would meet with us in prayer in such a way, Lord, in this season, that you would release a spirit of intercession and supplication in our midst. Lord, that you would release an awakening to Jesus as Lord. Lord, that we would be so enthralled with you and so contagious that, uh, Lord, our lives would spill out into the lives of others. Lord, I, I lift up the things that you are doing right now in this body, and I pray that each and every person um, who feels this calling would, would come on Wednesday and, and be blessed. I, I lift up, Lord, the women's retreat. I pray, Lord, that the guys of this congregation would bless their wives with a ticket to that retreat and take care of the babysitting and all the other arrangements. Lord, I... Lift up, Father, the ministries that are going on right now around this building. The youth and the children and those that are serving us food after this. And Lord, I lift up the concerns that are going on around us. The West Virginians, Lord, who have no water. Father, would you be the river of living water for them today, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I lift up those caught in the wicked world of human trafficking, Lord, on this human trafficking Sunday, Lord, I ask that you would continue to bless those in this congregation who are deeply involved in that issue, and I ask, Lord, that you would call those that you want to join them. Father, we ask for freedom for the captives, and Lord, as we continue to worship, we ask that you would fill this time with your presence. Thank you that you're here with us, and Lord, uh, may I decrease so that you may increase. In Jesus' name, the church agreed and said, Amen. 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 Well, good morning and welcome. And uh, we are continuing in our series uh, that we're calling Dusty Road. And this is uh, our vision casting series for the beginning of 2014. And we're looking at what it's like to walk with Jesus and to live and love in his power, not in our power. And we want to see Jesus way more deeply than as a teacher. Uh, he is an awesome teacher. Um, but we want to get beyond that Hellenistic mindset of uh, knowing up here. And we want to move into a life with Jesus uh, that he's inviting us to as a rabbi, where we walk with him, talk with him, including in that uh, our prayer life, of course, and become like him. And know what he knows and do what he does. Where he actually passes on his life to us and we help each other uh, bring that life fuller to fruition in each other's lives. So last uh, week or two weeks ago we started in this series with the understanding that the word of God is the primary uh, way that we can understand, know and, and enter into a relationship with the rabbi. And that the riches of his word and uh, the, full, the full awesomeness of hearing his voice in the word of God and speaking uh, to us and to our hearts. And then last week, we looked at the definition of grace and what this rabbi does and loves to do in dispensing grace to those who are humble enough to ask for it. And that everything in the Christian life, from Peter walking on the water to you and I leaving here today with a transformed prayer life 
That is grace. That is grace that he can give us. And this morning we want to dive deeper into prayer. Um, This is the primary mechanism where we can engage in a conversation. And we happen to be invited to a relationship with a praying rabbi. With a praying rabbi. This was what he modeled. More than three dozen times in the New Testament he teaches passionately on prayer. But more than that, he slips away in the early hours of the day before the sun comes up to that solitary place to be in communion with his father. And just imagine what it would have been like for those 12 guys to follow him around the dusty paths of Galilee and to find out every single morning he's up before they are, he's praying. They're watching him pray. They're watching him in earnest, intimate conversation with his father. They're watching him pray for the healing of people. They're watching him in spiritual warfare, destroying the work of the devil. Uh, They're watching him in intercession. They're watching him uh, in uh, teaching others how to pray. And this relationship that Jesus brings us into is very much anchored in this idea of prayer. One of the times that he gives a a very powerful teaching is in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6. And I just want us to look at that uh, right now. But before he teaches the Lord's Prayer, he goes into an extensive time of uh, preparation. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. And um, literally that is, don't be like the religious posers. Don't be like the actors playing religion. It has a slightly different meaning than hypocrite, although it is consistent with that. But it's this, don't be a play actor Christian. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. What an encouragement that is to our prayer lives. What an encouragement that Jesus would continue to teach. And uh, we've we've studied the Lord's Prayer many times in this uh, setting. And the Lord's Prayer is not necessarily meant to be said as a single prayer that we do by rote, but it's actually a series of six index sentences that lead off into topics where Jesus is saying, when you get into this kingdom, then you pray down the kingdom for a while. And when you want to forgive, you do that. And so it's, it's more of a lifestyle that, that Jesus is teaching. So what is prayer? And there's so many definitions, but I like this one um, by Dr. Ralph Martin. It says, prayer is, at root, simply paying attention to God. And think about that for a minute, because we know theologically God is omnipresent. He's here with us right now. He's here everywhere we go. He's always there, but we're not always consciously aware of that, are we? So this definition (coughs) is helpful in that it says, um, look, whenever you lock in, can I get a glass of water, please, Eric? (coughs) Whenever you lock in, whenever you put your attention to me, I am there with you. And we are in relationship. And whether we are transacting intercession, praying for others, whether we are asking for forgiveness, whether we are seeking grace from God, thank you, whether we are uh, asking for forgiveness of our sins, whether we are calling down the kingdom, whether we are doing spiritual warfare, all these things combine into this relationship where we find ourselves and and our goal as we walk this walk is to have an increasing percentage of our mind time, paying attention to God. Paying attention to Him in the midst of trials. Paying attention to Him in the midst of driving. In the midst of uh, dealing with uh, 
someone who cuts us off on the road. In the midst of the first five minutes of a movie where you wonder if you didn't do your homework and you should leave. Um, whatever. This is our invitation to pay attention to God. And I love that definition in its simplicity and what it allows us to include. Now more so than, or in addition to, uh, observing what Jesus taught and did, whether it's the Lord's Prayer, whether it's reading through the Gospels, the, the prayer in John 17, <clears throat> we also have way other way many other examples in the scriptures. And Jerry in the video referred to a prayer in 2 Corinthians 15, 12. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and their souls. Now, this occurred in 900 BC in the time of King Asa of Judah. And it was attached to a, a season of revival in that part of the people of God. And they were tearing down altars and getting rid of their idols. And they were turning towards God. There was broad-scale revival. We see throughout the scriptures and also in our church history that revival and transformation uh, in the people of God begins with prayer. And so as Jerry... Uh, has been discipling me over the years, I also have been in hundreds of prayer covenants. And I've seen these covenants change congregation. I've seen them change uh, marriages. I've seen them bring wayward children back to the Lord. I've seen them transform decision making of people considering buying homes and where they're going to live and whether to take a job or not. Um, and so we can imitate Jesus, we can get examples out of the scriptures, but also we can imitate those who are imitating Jesus. And Jerry is one of those people. And this prayer covenant, and you, you should have received a card on your way in today. Did everybody get a card with three stickies on it? Awesome. All right, well, our, our uh, game plan um, for those that want to join in is that we're going to uh, pray this prayer as a covenant, as a congregation, for 40 days. We're going to pray it through the 22nd of February, starting tomorrow. And we're gonna, that will cover the time <clears throat> that Jerry is with us, uh, teaching us on Wednesday nights. Um, and it will also be engaged in by our children. This morning, uh, the children will also receive... Uh, a children's prayer covenant. It's a little more simplified, um, but they will be able to join in with us and our youth as well and the whole, the whole congregation. And um, the goal of this is to uh, enter into this time together to seek <clears throat> an awakening to Jesus as our Lord, to Jesus as our rabbi, to Jesus as the author and perfecter of our faith. And so on one side of the card, uh, you've got some instructions on how to make this effective. And um, wherever you are on your journey of prayer, you can start and just take the next step with this. Don't think about or compare yourselves to how other people pray. Uh, just connect directly with Jesus and set the time aside. And uh, mostly, ask for grace. At last week's message, we, I think we burned like 40 or 50 copies of that thing. But it was a wonderful explanation and understanding of the grace available to us as we ask God to walk in this lifestyle with him. Now, uh, to get started, I want to uh, first focus, I'll come back and explain the prayer in greater detail. But I want to uh, just stop and ask you a question. When you seek God, what, do you, what if right now, like in the last few days, what have you been asking him? What have you been seeking him on? What have you been asking him to do for you? What's been on your heart in this question of what can God do for you? What do you need? What are you craving? And also, as you read the scriptures and hear messages here and walk in your small groups and read the Bible... What do you have a sense that God wants? 
So putting that all together, we ask. We simply ask. One of Jesus' most profound teachings on prayer is in John chapter 14, 15, and 16. And I encourage you to read that today or tomorrow, this week. But in that three chapters, seven times, and I don't think that's accidental, he repeats, ask, and it will be given to you. And he basically says there are only two conditions to having a prayer answered. The first condition is that you abide in Jesus. You remain in Him. Which means you confess your sins, you uh, get squared up with Him, and you abide in His presence as a blameless child of God. Not sinless, but blameless, because you've confessed all your known sin. That is abiding. And that you ask according to His will. So if you do those two things, your prayer will be answered. Maybe not how you want it answered, maybe not when you want it answered, but that prayer will be answered. And as a congregation, I want us to believe that when we ask, it will be given. It will be given. And that John 14, 15, and 16 will really encourage you because he repeats himself over and over and over again because he wants the disciples to really believe that prayer will make a difference. So we're going to start with a prayer experiment. There are three stickies on this thing. On the purple sticky, which is up front, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down a prayer request. Don't put your name on it. Don't, um, don't put any identifying information on it. But make your prayer request as specific as you know to make it. If you, don't have, if you don't have a pen, put your hand up. We'll get a pen to you. You should have got one when you came in. But write down your prayer request. Now, you may be saying, well, man, I have no idea what to ask for. Well, if you look at the things that the Lord talks about in, let's say, Revelation 2 and 3, when he looks at his church... He, he is looking for, go back to your first love. Are you repenting? Maybe you need to ask the Lord for a spirit of repentance. Willingness to suffer or do the hard thing. A real commitment to sexual purity. This is a big deal for the Lord. Maybe this has been a struggle area. Freedom from worrying about your reputation. Patient endurance. Living from His vision, not your vision. Exposing lukewarm attitudes, openness to correction, living in intimacy, more laborers, send more laborers into the harvest, more of the Holy Spirit, a greater desire for the Word of God, a change of heart, change of character, a deeper prayer life, greater fruitfulness. These are some of the things you could ask for, but God's probably been working with you, so just put down a request. And here's the experiment. We're going to have you write them down. When you're finished, we're going to collect them. And when you leave today, you're going to get an envelope with an anonymous prayer request in it. And as you take that envelope, you're committing uh, during this 40 days to to pray for that thing as well. And we are going to expect testimonies. We are going to expect people putting in their request and then having their request answered. So make it a request that you could say yes or no, that has been answered in the next 40 days. Make that your prayer request. So go ahead and take a, take a minute and write down your prayer request uh, like that. <clears throat> I'll give you about a minute to do that and then we'll collect them. Lord, as we write these requests down, we take you at your word. We believe, Lord, if we remain in you and we ask according to your will, it will be done for us. So, Lord, I pray you guide every person as they write their request down to make it clear, discernible as to whether it would be answered in 40 days. And Lord, that you would increase our faith. So God, we ask for your grace 
to be poured out on the congregation at this time. And Lord, I also ask for grace to be poured out on those who will take an envelope at the end of this service, who will pray for these prayer requests. And we ask, Lord, that you use these requests to grow the prayer life of this church, to grow our intimacy with you, to grow our faith and conviction. Lord, that our prayers do matter in your economy. And we ask, Lord, for an awakening to Jesus and for the kingdom to come in this time, in this place, as we enter this season, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody need more time? All right, ushers, could you come forward and uh, collect these requests? All right, awesome. Now, just to refresh ourselves, what is the goal of this? What are we trying to accomplish? We are trying to know, love, and enjoy God. To know, love, and have intimate relationship with our rabbi. And he wants to be present with us. He wants to encourage us. He wants to communicate with us. He wants to hear and respond to our prayers. He wants to bring his kingdom to the earth as it is in heaven. And he wants us in that process to grow in a worshipful daily experience at work, at home, as we walk around living out loud with this life of prayer. Um, He wants nothing less than for us to be like he was when he walked the earth. To know, be, and do what he knew, was, and did. And that's our, that's our goal. And uh, as this happens, we will be transformed. We will be transformed. You know, it's, it's so observable. I, I went to a Bengals game a couple of weeks ago and there is an entire culture there. And the longer you observe, you walk into the stadium and you look around and you realize, wow, I mean, I didn't get here four hours ago. I'm late. It's almost like being late for church. You know, people look at you. You have to get through the aisle and get to your seat. And oh, there's another one who's late. There's a whole culture of painting your face or wearing uniforms. And uh, anyway, I, I, I found myself... Uh, realizing that this is a learned behavior. This is a learned behavior. There's little kids there, and they're growing in that, and they're learning that, uh, that behavior. The same thing is true in our walk with God. And I said at the outset of this series, our vision for this, this year is to turn down the share of voice in our life of other things and turn up the share of voice of God, whether that's by reading his word. By the way, we've been reading the Bible over there out loud. Uh, We're uh, in Luke right now, and uh, we're targeting to finish uh, Tuesday somewhere between 6 and 7. So if you're around Tuesday between 6 and 7, we'll be uh, dancing and celebrating in the chapel and finishing Revelation. Uh, That's my guess, my guesstimate of when we're going to finish. But it's been it's been awesome to hear God speak. Uh, Jerry Stevens came in one night with his sons to read the Bible, and they're in the front row getting ready to take their turn, and all of a sudden one one of the young guys says, Hey, Dad, what are we doing here? And right at that moment... Uh, one of the council members from, from uh, Marymount was reading a psalm in the 70s. I can't remember which one. And it basically said, so that you can pass on my truth to every generation. <laughs> and I, I looked over at him and I said, 
that's why you're here. <laughs> and he looked at me, a big smile on his face. So uh, anyway, it, it's, it's, it's true that as we get into the culture uh, of God and we read his word in the language of God and how he thinks and what he's doing, things change. And there are many, one of the joys of being a, an English-speaking Christian is that there's a million translations, uh, I, uh, not a million, but dozens of translations. I want to read you the vision the Apostle Paul had for how he wanted to know God. Because this, cap, this section of Philippians 3 captures better than anything I could say what I hope happens during this prayer covenant. And uh, it's in the Amplified Version. It's up there. And um, let, let's read it together. It's just uh, so powerful. And we'll, we'll stop after each, each portion. It's Philippians 3. 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I got four slides here. So let, let's read this together. Yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth, and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and clearly. For his sake, I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish, refuse, dregs, in order that I may win, gain Christ the Anointed One. Isn't that amazing? That's the Apostle Paul who's seen all these amazing visions of the third heaven and done all these miracles. And this is how he thinks about knowing Christ. Now let's continue. Verse 9. And, and known as in him, not having any self-achieved righteousness that can be called my own, based on my obedience to the law's demands, ritualistic uprightness, and supposed right standing with God, thus acquired, but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the Anointed One, the truly right standing with God, which comes from God by saving faith. Wow. So as we go deeper and deeper into this, how we perform fades into the background as dregs and refuse, but how he performs rises in our lives and in our consciousness and in our awareness and the religiosity disappears and this vibrant knowledge of Christ comes in and, and as we come closer we see repentance and as we repent we encourage one another because we realize we're not, we're not doing this by doing church we're doing this because he did it we're receiving his grace through faith let's look at the next verse for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. Wow. This is nothing less than walking in him in the power of the resurrection. This is what happens when we enter into prayer and communion with him. There, it's, it's, it's in, in a way, it's kind of like plugging into a, a million volt current and life comes as we connect with him and his life then that life starts throw, flowing through us and the last verse that if possible I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead even while in the body so our bodily resurrection our future which we studied in the, in the recreation of the cosmos, begins to be an actual experience here on earth as we are lifted out of our way of doing things into his way of doing things. 
So let's look actually at the covenant. <clears throat> it's a very simple prayer. <clears throat> and more so than the actual words, I want us to pay attention to the ten biblical themes on the left-hand side. Because as Jerry said, this thing sort of flows just like biblical theology. It flows that once we grasp the grace that we've received to become a child of God. And by the way, if you're here this morning and your experience or your spiritual journey is at the point where you are not sure that you've become a child of God or you're not sure that you want to become a child of God yet in this sense, uh, we, we want to encourage you to pray this prayer because this is a prayer that can, through the grace of Christ, lead you into uh, a knowledge of God. So I encourage you, if, if you say, well, I haven't committed myself to Christ yet, well, then maybe the way that you will do this is that you will actually pray through this prayer and these things will become more and more real to you as you ask God to reveal himself. So that's, that's another way to think about this prayer. But for those of us who have received God's grace, we, we recognize by the testimony of the Holy Spirit in us that allows us to say, Abba, Father, we realize we have been made children of God by grace. Well, the response of that automatically is love. As Jerry said, love is the natural response to being shown grace. And so we ask God in the second line, by your grace, help me make knowing, loving, and obeying you my highest priority. This is love, that they obey my commands. So an evidence of our love is that we would walk through that, that love. And so pray this prayer any way you wish in terms of this idea of love. And then out of being loved by God and loving God, the next obvious thing is for us to love our neighbors. So we have compassion. God, help me love others around me the way you love me. Isn't it, doesn't it make common sense that if we've been shown grace and we've been loved by God and we're filled with God's love, that, that we would also want to extend that love to others? So those are the first three lines. And then out of that compassion, we recognize our shortcomings. We recognize that we don't do that all the time. We don't do any of these first three things all the time. We forget the grace, we forget our first love, and we are not compassionate to our neighbor. And so we come into a place of repentance. And God, bring me to a place of repentance. And there, confess your sin. And ask God to cleanse you from your sin. The Bible says if we do this, if we come in repentance and confession, He will not only forgive our sins, but He'll cleanse us. He'll wash us free of all unrighteousness, right? And then we're in a place of blamelessness again. We're in a place of abiding again. And there we ask God to show us how to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And this is a quote from Psalm 9, the first verse. Um, but that first two verses, David is saying, um, I will worship you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will rejoice and be glad in you. Not in what you do for me, but in you. And I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. And it'll just flow. And you'll, you'll be amazed what happens in your private worship. You just let God have that worship. And then it says... Now it's time for commitment. And we take that commitment. And we say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. In new ways. Recognizing that there's progression to be made. Recognizing there's parts of my heart that are still hard. Recognizing there's, there's areas of my life that have not been yielded to the Lordship of Christ. My pride just even these last few days, just confessing and yielding on that. And then, change me any way you want. Now, I encourage you to seriously consider before you commit to this covenant. At the end, in a few minutes, I'm going to 
invite you on your yellow sticky to write your name. If you write your name and during the closing worship song you want to join this covenant, you put it in here. And we will pray, as a staff, we will pray for you every day for 40 days by name. And you will pray for us by name. And we'll have some names up there that you can write down. And that's what that blue sticky is for. That blue sticky is for you to write down names of people that you will enter into a covenant with. So maybe it's your, your family. Maybe it's your house. Maybe it's uh, your, your team. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, a collection of friends, your accountability group, whatever it is. But this is a dangerous prayer. Because you are inviting the Lord of the universe to mess with you. And it is awesome what he does. It is awesome what he does when you ask him to change you. And he will change you. We're going to look at relationships next week. But um, a friend gave me a CD and there was a saying in there. And it, it, it was the saying that if you do not transform your pain, you will transmit your pain to others. So here, we ask Jesus as Lord of our life to transform those things that have caused us pain into things that he makes holy and righteous for his use. So we are, in this time, we are healed. Bit by bit. And then we move to the next part of the prayer, which is dependence. And here we say, we are not going to do this in our own power. So we're going to ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill us so that we can actually carry out this, this life of walking with the rabbi, this life of having Jesus be Lord over our lives. So we are in total dependence on the Holy Spirit, the grace of God. Ask for grace to transform your prayer life your walk with Jesus. And then we come uh, to the place uh, uh, where we ask him now, we're ready to be useful. We say, give us influence. Make me an instrument of your grace and truth and forgiveness and righteousness and justice. That means we're, we're walking with his lenses on and we're where it is our call to do it, where we've been called to do it. We are righting wrongs. This is our ministry in a lot of times. We're righting wrongs and we're, we're, we're cooperating with Jesus <clears throat> in making things right. And then we have discipleship. What a beautiful, logical next step as we interact with others and bring the grace of God to them to invite them to follow Jesus with us. And this card, uh, I keep a couple of extras with me, and this card has been a wonderful way to invite people to follow Jesus with me. Because I'm able to share um, wherever they're at in their, in their journey. Well, have you, have you thought about, maybe you and I will pray about this for the next 40 days. And I'll pull out a card, and, and, and it might be a person who is not familiar with the Lord, but who wants, who's ready to walk with Jesus, to consider walking with Jesus. So we can invite and ask God to show us. Show us. Who are the people of peace around us who are ready to hear about Jesus, who are ready to investigate His ways. And then finally, we wrap up the prayer in the authority of Jesus by concluding in the name of Jesus. When we say in the name of Jesus, we're not, of course, invoking a genie. We're simply saying in the character, in the authority, in the agenda, in the lifeblood, in the ways of Jesus. And we're saying this is his territory. This is his domain. And we're coming under that authority. This is where all these things get their power and get their Righteousness is from Him. And so we then uh, pray this. And uh, as you think about joining this covenant, you, you're joining in for 40 days. It's a, it's a covenant of biblical proportions. I will say that. 
where you will ask God for grace to fulfill your covenant. There have been days where I've just totally forgotten. An emergency happens. I've pulled out of bed early in the morning, never get to it. There's grace. There's grace. And God is not uh, so interested in you ticking off the box as he is in these biblical themes transforming your life, transforming my life. Can you imagine the power of an entire community, two churches, Marymount and Gladstone, pouring into this, asking to be, for Jesus to be Lord, the impact of that in the heavenly realm? And this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to um, just recap then what to do with these stickies. Um, the purple one uh, has been, is being put in envelopes now. You will pick one of those up on your way out. The yellow one, uh, you will make your commitment to pray. Write your name and put it in this basket. Uh, after I get done praying, the worship team uh, is going to come. Why don't you guys come on up? The worship team is going to come up. After I get done praying, uh, there will be a, 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 just some time to meditate a little bit. And um, then when you're ready, come up and make your commitment. That's with your yellow sticker. And with your blue sticker, you may want to ask those that you came with if they want to be in a covenant with you. Uh, there may be um, others that are not here this morning. Then you can uh, uh, catch up with them later today by phone and make a covenant with them. And then in the, uh, in the blue sticky, would you also write down the name of the staff? Uh, so that's Lois, Paul, Jeff, Joe, Renee, Jasmine, Jordan, and Dennis. And... Um, you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to take them all, but uh, uh, if, you, if you wish, you're welcome to. Um, but we're going to be praying for you, and you're going to be praying for us, and then any other names that will go on your blue sticky. And of course, uh, Wednesday night, we're going to worship uh, at the beginning of each meeting. Then Jerry's going to teach then we're going to pray. We're going to be broken up into small groups. And it is going to be a prayer meeting. So we're canceling the well for these six weeks while Jerry is here. And we're actually going to pray. So those evenings will be super encouraging uh, times of prayer. So I'll give you a minute to just uh, jot down anything you want to jot down there. And... Uh, Also, when you bring your commitment up, there will be prayer teams in the corner. And um, uh, as we finish this last worship song, just encourage you to stop by the prayer teams. If, if <clears throat> you've never been able to get a, a prayer life going the way you want it, you ask for, you ask for prayer. And just say, look, I need the grace of God to change my prayer life. Um, if there is a, a difficulty in getting time, you, you ask for the grace of God to set the right time aside. Set your best time aside. And don't go into this um, alone. Get someone with you. I was in a prayer covenant recently and uh, the person after about 12 days forgot to pray. And I called them up and I said, how are you doing? And they were working through a, a decision. And I prayed with them and I said, well, let's, let's start over for another 40 days today. And um, we did. And we finished and we talked in between. And God did some amazing things during that time. So um, I'm just going to pray for us now. But I just encourage you to <clears throat> throw yourselves into this. That the kingdom of God would come. That a spirit of intercession, Lord, would be released in this congregation. Lord, that we discover the joy, the, the supreme, the supreme joy of interacting with you each day and of breathing in your life and your truth and your love and your grace and your compassion. Lord, that we would be brought to repentance and beautiful worship and deeper understanding and commitment, Lord, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Lord, the, that the congregation would uh, 
be transformed during this time. That, that you would anoint Jerry, God, to come and teach us, Father, in ways that um, would transmit what you've done for him in 60 years of following you. The joy and the peace and the, the sheer laughter that accompanies him in his journey with Christ. And Lord, that you would uh, have us imitate Paul in the amplified version of Philippians 3 or Jerry in his 60 years and 47 years of praying this. However you want to work, God, we say, come, have your way. Teach us to pray, God. Teach us to pray like we've never prayed before. And release your kingdom, Lord. Release your kingdom in our village, in our neighborhoods, in our city. That Jesus would be lifted up the way he deserves to be lifted up. And that there would be no fooling around, Lord, but the pure exhilarating joy of knowing Christ as Lord. That we would be found in him in this season. I ask in the name of Jesus.